Hello, I'm Ken Walker from Pool School. Today I'm going to show you how to test the water in your pool. We're going to be testing for residual chlorine and we'll be testing the pH of the water using this very simple, very inexpensive test kit. There are other types of test kit available on the market. This is a digital test meter that uses tablets. This is a digital test meter that uses reactive strips. But for most people, this is perfect. Inside the kit, we have this little device here, two safety caps on the top, color charts down the side, and on the back, two test tubes. We need to fill these test tubes with water from the pool so that we can test it. Okay, so here we are at the side of the pool with the test kit. We're going to take a water sample so that we can then test for residual chlorine and pH. We need to take the water sample from a little bit down into the pool because for reasons that are explained in the pool school maintenance guide, the top few inches of water may not be representative of the rest of the pool, particularly if the pool's been still and it's a sunny day. So in order to get a sample from about this far down in the pool. We turn the test kit over so the entrances to the test tubes are at the bottom. Plunge your arm down into the water, invert the test kit and let the air out. And now we've got a sample from arm's elbow's depth down into the swimming pool. We're gonna take this back over to the casita and I'm gonna show you how to apply the reagent so that we can test for these two important parameters in the pool. So here we are back with the water sample from the pool. These, these two test tubes are a little bit over full at the moment. We need it to be exactly the right level. In the center of this window, top window, there's a little line which is very difficult to see unless you've got it in front of your eyeballs. And I'm gonna shake the water out until it's at the correct level. Now you can see I've done that a few times before. We're gonna use these two reagents now to change the color of the water in the test tubes um, to make, so that we can then make a comparison against the um, color charts on either side. This one is called phenol red and this helps us to measure the pH of the water. We need five drops to go into here in this test kit. Other test kits might use four, they might use half a dozen, so check the instructions on your individual test kit. The easiest way to get a full drop out first time is to squeeze the air out of the bottle, invert the bottle and let the air back in in a rush like this. Now we should get a full drop out first time and we need five. Three drops and a squirt's not gonna do it, it needs to be right. We put in one, two, three, four, five drops of the reagent, put the lid back on the bottle and put the safety cap on top of the test tube. Now we're going to use the, the, the other reagent, this is called Otto, on the other side of the test kit. This is the chemical that tests for residual chlorine in the pool. You might notice it's got a safety cap on it. This is because this is a chemical that can burn you, so be very careful you don't get it on your skin. Again, squeeze the air out, turn it upside down, let the air back in with a rush, and we put five drops in. One, two, three, four, five drops. Again, put the, tasty, <coughs> put, put the lid back on the bottle and put the cap on top of the test kit. Now shake it up and hold it up to the light. Compare the colors that you, you can see in the test tubes with the colors on either side of the test kit. And we can see from this one that it's, slight, it's between 1 and 2 parts per million. And on this side, it's between 7.8 and 8.2. So we can say it's about 1.5 for residual chlorine and about 8 for pH. Chlorine's about right. pH is a little bit high. And that's how you use a test kit. Okay, so now we've done the test, we need to make a record of it. We use a logbook like this into which you can write down the date, what you get the results for residual chlorine, what you get as a result for pH, and the actions that you've taken in your pool to remedy these potential imbalances in the chemistry. It's important that you keep a record for several reasons. Firstly, any of these chemicals that we use here to correct the pH or to add chlorine to the pool, are, uh, well, there isn't anything to do with swimming pools that's inexpensive, um, and chemicals is no exception. So the fewer of these chemicals that you can use, the better it's going to be for your pocket and the cheaper it's going to be for you to, for you to operate your swimming pool. Uh, but secondly, for example, if you have a, a problem sometime in the future, a pool engineer can look through these records and he can work out pretty much what's going wrong with your pool with the assistance of these records in the logbook here. Um, and thirdly, because there's no hard and fast rule of what you should do in a swimming pool, you can't test the water and say, OK, the pH is this and therefore I've got to do that because every swimming pool is different. For example, you may have a pool with it got a lot of foliage around it, like this one that gets a lot of leaves in it. This is going to deplete the chlorine. You might get a, a, 
a swimming pool that's really close to a cement works or something you get dust in this is really going to affect the ph it's important that you take a record and make the adjustments for your pool well thanks for watching the little video on how to use a test kit for actually applying the chemicals for calculating the doses and applying the chemicals full details are in our downloadable pdf document from swimming pool maintenance guide dot com um, and uh, within this guide you'll find all the videos that we have in the series and I hope they're useful to you. Thanks again. Bye-bye.